everybody. Welcome back to Circle Time. We have a very exciting guest on with us today. She is zooming in. Would you like to introduce yourself to the circlers? I like for my guests to introduce themselves. Oh, perfect. My name is Robin Del Monte, also known as Girl Boss Town. The name sounds chuggy, but there's a story behind it. And now I just have to stick with it. So I like to introduce myself as Robin first instead of Girl Boss Town. And <laughs> I make social media content that discusses social strategy, creative direction, and trend forecasting, along with all things pop culture and personal. And I'm so excited to be here today. We are so excited that you are here, truly. I feel like I've been waiting for so long to talk to you. So yes. I think so, the only time we ever like crossed paths barely was at the Golden Globes, not to was. like name drop. And I definitely <laughs> like it, it was a lot less cool than it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> Just to be clear. Yeah. And uh, those types of things are so intimidating. And I feel like I don't belong in like any of the conversations. And it was same. Like you asked something about my dog. And I was like, wow, like somebody's talking to me. Like this is. <laughs> I'm doing good. Um, but yeah, we okay, never got to that's fully. Good. I was probably very nervous as well because yeah. I also get so uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm so like, why am I here? Yeah, exactly. What am I doing? Yeah. Totally. And we were sitting in the, the viewing room yeah. together. <laughs> like smushed in boots. That's like one of my favorite things to talk about when I, because, you know, it's like an exciting thing to say that you're going to. Mm -hmm. And then like when we were there, we were like, can't believe we're here. And then like, when we found out we were going to the, sit in the viewing room, we were like, of course, like, duh, that's where we would be sitting. Like, I don't know what we thought we were going to be doing here at the Golden Globes. But like, it was so funny that we got all dressed up to just go watch it on TV. Like, yeah. Ew. In a but the, af the after party was so cool with everybody. That was really that cool. That was really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Mm -hmm. But that really was the only time that we've gotten mm -hmm. to hang out. Yeah. Well, how is your dog? He's great. He's at the groomers right now. He is my entire world. And I honestly, like I got into therapy again heavily this year. And like a main reason was like my codependency with my dog. Cause like that's okay. how like sick it is. But I'm obsessed with him. He's great. He's amazing. He has an au pair. He's just, does he? He does. I mean, I travel that's so really much chic. for my job. Yeah. So I was like, I need to get somebody like full time who can like watch him with me and stuff. And I feel like it's like that ABC family movie, the au pair. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I loved that movie me too me too i wanted to be an au pair and then i was a nanny and i thought i was like gonna live out my au pair dreams yeah. and it was not anything like that at all yeah i find myself on nanny talk a lot like what all the, that like all the nannies on tiktok oh like on tiktok mm -hmm. yeah nanny talk i'm no. surprised i'm not on nanny talk a lot most of them are in nashville and oh, they like live in all the houses look the same and they're all with like their Stanleys and their Lululemon, like making grilled cheese. And I'm just like, I want to be you. Like I want to be you. I was like so excited to be a nanny. Like I was like, I feel like this is my calling. Mm -hmm. And I, I really didn't like it. Right. Like it was not as, <laughs> it was not even close to as glamorous as the viewing room at the Golden Globes. Yeah. That was much more glamorous than my life as a nanny. And you didn't have to hide your snacks. Like whenever I would babysit, like even though they said I could have snacks, I would still like hide it in the trash can because I oh felt my God. so awkward. Me too. No, I'd put like the trash in my purse. Yes. <laughs> like the like fruit Fish. snacks yes. that I would eat. I would like put the trash in my purse. I, now I try to think about like, like when I have kids, like what am I going to want the babysitter? Like, should I, should I be like, listen, I know you're going to eat the snacks. Don't put the trash in your purse. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little thing in life. Yeah, it is. It really is. Just throw out your trash. Just, well, or just hide it. <laughs> yeah. Or hide it. it. You're not alone if you're hiding your trash when you're babysitting. That's all we're saying. No, like this is a PSA to like everybody who's hiding their trash while they're babysitting. Like let's mm -hmm. have a conversation with ourselves and be like, mm -hmm. not only am I taking care of a human life, but like I'm taking care of myself by having a job. Like I deserve to put this fruit snack in the trash. It's true. And did you ever like, were you ever watching something on TV and then you'd switch, switch the channel it? before yeah. the parents got home? Even though you weren't like, I wasn't even watching anything bad, but I was like, I don't want them to know. Yeah. It's not like I was watching Double Shot at Love with Tila Tequila, which I was watching at home. <laughs> and when my mom would come home, I'd like switch it so fast. But yeah, no, I, we've all been there. We've all been there. 
The Babysitting Chronicles. Yeah. I got to get on Nanny Talk. Yeah, no, it's really good. Do you know what TikTok I'm on right now? What? Is pe- like videos that have two likes mm-hmm. and it's people trying out filters. Like that is my entire For You page. It is, pe- it is the videos have two likes mm-hmm. and they're people doing just r- random filters. And it's like every single video I see is that. When I get the two like videos, it's like Southern, like 56 year old women, like, lip singing with like an eyelash filter on and I'm like how is this on my FYP like you know what I'm talking about it'll be like a southern woman like with like the thick, yeah. the blue eye filter and the lashes right thing I'm like what is this or like the egg peelers have you ever I've had- heard about these egg peelers and I've mm-hmm. never gotten one yeah no it's it's bad I like I've pitched to so many like people in the industry I'm like there needs to be like a TLC show that just like dives into like the lives on TikTok, like, you know, like TikTok live of the people peeling the eggs, I totally the people agree. with the gems, like all the, of the-, the ones that are doing the like cosplay now. Yes. Or like, what about the ones that pretend they're sleeping and like, you can like send stuff to like make like an <laughs> alarm go off. Like I've never seen any of these. Oh, okay. When this is on the internet, people back me up. It's <laughs> crazy. Like there'll be, I, it's, there'll be people pretending to sleep in a room and be like, Okay. And like, you can like send like, you know how you can like send money on TikTok live or whatever? Yeah. To like make like a dog bark and the people pretend to be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Or like have like an alarm. What? Yeah. It's honestly genius because like, I want to send those alarms. Yeah. Like I will be giving them my money. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, don't wake daddy talk. Like remember that game? Like don't wake daddy the board <laughs> yeah. game. It's like that. It's a cause playing that. That's crazy. The only lives I'm on are... um. The writing of the names. Oh, yeah, yeah. And those are fun. Did you well, ever do Honey? kind of annoying. Like Honey Boo Boo's family? No. You know Honey? What? You know Honey Boo Boo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Her family, they like compete against each other in lives to like make oh, money. I've never seen those. To make money because obviously like they're in the same house doing it against each other. I think that's like their side hustle. Oh, as of, what are they doing main, main time? <laughs> I haven't asked. And like when I do, um, they ignore my question on the live. It's just too interesting. Busy. We should get in there. Maybe yeah. that's their main hustle now. I, I would assume so. They're always live. Oh, my God. I am way too scared to go on TikTok live. I used to do it back in the day. By back in the day, I mean like a year ago. And I, it's like kind of embarrassing because like I would watch all my friends do it and get all these questions. Like, no. I, like I would like hop on and do it. It'd be like literally 76 people. Like seven- <laughs> You know what? That's a... Pretty well, solid amount. Well, yeah, which is great. But like nobody be asking questions. No one's like, asking anything. And you're yeah. like, okay, I'm just sitting waiting for some questions to start rolling through. <laughs> okay, yeah. What is my, <laughs> no, I'm not, uh, like, and the, that's it. Like, it's so awkward. I was just talking to someone. They had to like go live yeah. on Instagram for their job. And she didn't realize that like it, that it starts recording right away. She thought it started recording once somebody asks a question. Oh no! So like the first like two minutes are literally just her like, the no like the, just sitting there, not moving, not saying anything. The millennial pause or whatever it's called. Yeah, that's like a millennial. Yeah, somebody people call sleep. me out for that because sometimes when I'm making a video, like I'm still old, I just like click and like then start talking. People will be like millennial pause, and I'm like it's so bad because I do the same thing. I also start every video. Okay, so. Okay, so this, okay, so, and then I'm rewatching it. I'm like, oh my God, I think I'm like youthful. Uh, and my, the fact that I'm 30 is like really coming off in these videos. Yeah, I'm 29. So I, I feel the same way. Well, I'm, I guess I'm almost 30, but I just, I'm just estimating at this point. Yeah, it's, I, I say that I'm 30 now because TikTok either says that I'm like 49 or like 12. So I'm like, <laughs> let's just do this. I saw a comment on one of my pictures and it was like, well, she's only 22. So it's, and it was like my wedding picture. And I was like, I, I'm not 22. <laughs> like I wanted to like respond to be like, I am not 22. Beep, 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 beep. Whoa. Another single circler alarm going off. And I am talking to all of those single circlers out there. You know, anyone, not just the ones who are looking for something serious, anyone, because you know what? Summer might be ending, but it still is technically summertime. And what a better time to have fun and make some unforgettable memories. And Tinder is here to help you find the perfect partner for those moments. 
Remember everyone, it starts with a swipe. So many possibilities really are just a match away. Tinder is the world's most popular dating app and that means that there are the most opportunities there to find whatever it is you're looking for because success on Tinder really can mean whatever it is you want it to. And there is a reason why over 1.5 million Tinder users go on an IRL date every single week. Other dating apps, they're hard, but Tinder really does make it easy and fun and also just straightforward. So you can say what you want and what you're looking for, and you can make sure the people you're talking to are in the same boat. So you're not wasting any time. And I just think that's so important. Tinder just released Relationship Goals, a new status for your profile that shows others what types of connections you are looking for. Relationship Goals is just one of many features that Tinder has released to make sure you're comfy on the app. And you know, I want all my circlers to be comfy at all times. Plus, Tinder has more safety features than any other dating app, and I want all my circlers to be safe out there. On Tinder, it starts with a swipe. Download Tinder today and explore all of the possibilities for yourself. Good luck out there, my sweet, sweet circlers. I really cannot believe I'm even saying this because it feels like summer has just started, but back to school shopping is here. And I have a little tip for all of you who will be taking part. You can cross everything off your list before the big day with DoorDash. Stock up on supplies and lunchtime snacks all in one place. All of your favorite retail, your favorite grocery, your favorite convenience stores are on the app so you can shop everything you or your kids need for back to school. That's right. It is the one-stop shop to fill your bellies, your backpacks, and your pantry. Plus, it's DoorDash, which means my personal favorite thing. You're going to be enjoying that next level convenience with delivery in the hour making it easier than ever before to get your back to school needs fast. You gotta be prepared before the big day arrives and DoorDash is the easiest and most convenient way to do that. Shop DoorDash to get everything you need for the back to school season delivered right to your door. Order now for stress-free back to school shopping. Don't forget, that's code CIRCLETIME for 50% off your next order. Use promo code CIRCLETIME to get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more at convenience, grocery, or retail stores on DoorDash. Terms apply. I mean, I feel like we have just covered so many exciting topics, but for like any of the circlers who somehow don't know who you are because I feel like you have such a wonderful presence online and I just love what you do, but you can you I know you slightly explained it when you explained who you are yeah. but like do you want to go into it a little bit get into it a little bit because I just I think it's so interesting and I I have some other questions for you yeah so I would say I always say the tv was my babysitter growing up I okay. was like addicted to like tv movies youtube social media from like a very young age I did not do well in school at all like I did DECA and cheerleading so I could like go stay at a hotel with my friends like I was just like not into school at all but I was so invested in pop culture and everybody in my life told me that was kind of vapid and that it wasn't going to really bring me anywhere and then when I kind of started to study pop culture and social media as like a science and an art it became marketing essentially yeah so uh, I worked a couple corporate jobs couldn't get a job I like within LA came back this whole like journey. And then I quit my corporate job in email marketing and was going to go back to school to be an esthetician. Cause I was like, if I have to work for the rest of my life, I might as well get like free, like filler or Botox or like facial. And so I had a couple months off. So I was working at anthropology and being a waitress to raise money to go to school. And I started posting heavily on social media on TikTok about like pop culture. I'd be like, this is what the Kardashians would order at Chick-fil-A, just like random things. And it got like a little bit of a following. And then I was thinking about Madison Beer randomly. And I was like, she's so stunning. I love her music, but I feel like she's not as big as she could be in a sense. And I was like, what would I do if I was like on her team? Because I just watched like the Jamilio documentary. So I came up with that idea. I was like, here are PR moves I have for Madison Beer. And I was like hung over on my couch, with, like no makeup on. And it got a lot of traction. And then influencers started commenting like, oh, do me next, do me next. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then brands started commenting it. And I was making like 25 videos a day. I was like pumping this out and I was growing oh so God. fast. 
And then the brands and celebrities actually started to reach out to me. And I was like, I'm rolling silverware at my job in Medford, Massachusetts. Like I was just putting this on the internet for fun. Right. And then it really turned into a career with the type of content that I made by putting my ideas essentially out there for free, which I got a lot of flack for. But that just showed the brands that I was speaking about that people are already invested in our relationship and it's already getting traction. And the fact that I can bring a creator's perspective to the creative, because at the end of the day, audiences spend more time with these creators on these apps and with their friends in real life. And that relationship is built on trust. And if you can tap into that while trying to work with a brand and use that formula in a sense, great things can happen. So now I have a consulting business on the back end where I work with brands and celebrities to do essentially what I do on my page in real life. Yeah, that's amazing. And forward facing, I still put out that type of content. I'll do pop culture content as well. And then the last pillar that I kind of speak about is my personal life and my relationship with grief and my philanthropic work with grief as well. So there's a a bunch of different sectors in a sense, but this all happened over the past like year and a half, which is insane. I mean, that's like a complete... 180 like or yeah yeah, it's just it's wild yeah like how has it I feel like when things happen so fast like that I feel like there's people that come on here that you know kind of say similar things about it just kind of taking off so fast and I like feel like that can be pretty Mm -hmm. jarring and just like really intense because you're living one life and then all of a sudden like you're getting all of these kind of crazy opportunities and doing these crazy things and I think for you, you know, like you've lived a full life before all of this happened, like you had normal jobs and everything. And that's kind of what I say about myself too. Like just that I've just, I agree. Just a part of like whatever normal life is, but like just doing random things. Then I think it's helped me like have a Different perspective, gratitude. Yeah, just like a solid head on my shoulders yeah. with the whole with this whole world because it can be yeah. pretty crazy. But how has it been for you? I think that I was going to say before I even say it, my age has helped so much because I've wanted to do this thing since I was 22. Like I moved out to LA, like tried to do all of it. Like literally nothing happened. I was like waitressing at the Cabo Cantina and like working in a rug <laughs> shop. Fun. Yes. But if it happened to me, then things would be so different. And I think when it happens so fast, there's such privilege that comes with that. But then at the same time, it shifts your perspective, it shifts your life. And like that type of change, it's hard to deal with while you're consistently growing. It's like, it's not, there's not like a second for me to stop. Well, now there is because it's been like a year and a half, but as it's going so fast, you're kind of like, okay, this is great. I'm achieving everything I've always wanted. Like this is the biggest blessing in the world. And you want like you're taking, 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 instead of being like, okay, wait a minute, like, let me take a step back. What do I actually want from all of this? Like, what's going to give me longevity? Like, how do I, how do I feel while I'm doing these things? Like I put 37 flights last year, like I, which is like amazing because I live in Boston and I was going to LA and New York for like every other week. And I was doing all of these amazing opportunities that in my brain, I always thought from a kid, were going to make me like the happiest I've ever been. Right. Right. And when you achieve those things that you once thought were going to make you the happiest you've ever been, it's one, the coolest thing in the world. But then you kind of stand there like, okay, well, like now, like now what? Like, like you know what I mean? Right, then, right. Want- There's always like something more yeah. that you could be doing all of a sudden. And yeah. Yeah. So I think the first stage of it is like me accomplishing all my dreams and doing all the things I've ever wanted and lifting up the curtain behind that, seeing what it's really like and experiencing it. And then when that's done, I'm like, okay, well, what's next? And then comes the like, I always need to be doing more because since I came up so fast, like I don't want to lose what I have. So I'm like ripping onto everything to be like, well, I don't want to lose it. Like, I don't want to lose it. And that can get in your head as well. But at the end of the day, like it's the biggest blessing and privilege to be in my position. But I still do think that like my voice matters when it comes to me, like speaking about things I'm struggling with that comes with that. Because I, in 2020, like I was sitting on my couch watching these like influencers talk about like hate comments and whatever. I'd be like, oh, boo fucking who? Like, 
you you get these hate comments like just don't look I was a hater like no I wouldn't yeah. hate comments <laughs> but I was being like well it can't be that bad like look at their life like they have everything they've ever wanted and now that I'm in that position I'm like oh my gosh like they 100% had a reason to complain and or say something about it because like now that I'm dealing with it it's just so different I feel like it's the biggest blessing and the biggest privilege to be where I'm at because I've always wanted this but it's not what I ever thought it was going to be. You know what totally. I mean? Yeah, but, I completely understand that. Yeah. And I also think that I'm such like a homebody and like I'm best friends with my best friends from elementary school. Like I love like being in the beaches in New Hampshire with my friends. And like, I feel like I have like a Hannah Montana a little bit because I cherish and I know those moments is what matters so much in life is like genuine happiness and like being with the people that you love. And I cherish that so much. And I feel like I used to cherish like before all this, like validation and like wanting more followers and more people. Like I used to think like that was like what was going to bring me the utmost happiness. Right, right. And it has because it's given me so much. It's given me financial stability, like a career I've always wanted. But like the flashy parts of it, I thought I would like eat up and love. And it's actually like what I struggle with the most. Yeah, no, I completely understand and and like honestly that's pretty spot on to how I feel about most fit things I think that I also like I always said I felt like Hannah Montana especially when I was like teaching preschool because I taught preschool for so long even when I was like full like a full-time vlogger and like was like doing this as my full-time job and then I would just go and go into the school and like teach and I was like this is like just it just like grounds me a little bit and I just like needed to have those things around because if you don't like I just feel like your like head can fall off like it's just it just gets so crazy and like you have to have the friends outside of it all and like just like the home life and all of that because it can get really insane I feel like everybody learns that eventually everybody who does this type of thing. And then, but for some people, like when they start younger, it just might take longer to learn it or whatever it is. But I feel like that's definitely, it's definitely good to have some sort of balance. I also think like what Kylie Jenner said in that one Kardashian episode, like I think some people at the same time though, like some people are made for this. You know what I mean? Like some people Mm -hmm. are so good at like that. And I'm yeah. like, that is not me. But I like, know. I watch people. I have people in my life. But I'm like, they they were born for this. Like, they totally. were literally born for this. And I admire that so much. Yeah. So I think there's like two different sides of like the industry. Like some people, like it's in their blood, in their veins. And like they, they actually get energy from it and like mm-hmm. love it. And, uh, and sometimes for me, like the like flashy sides of it, like it like actually like Brings me, makes me feel small. And like, I'm like, I totally agree. Yeah. Okay, my sweet angel circlers. If any of you have ever had unprotected sex, or you've forgotten your birth control, or you've had a condom broke, or you think maybe the condom broke, but you're not really sure what happened, I'm excited to talk about a new company that is giving emergency contraception a much needed rebrand. I feel like pretty much everyone has their own story or they know someone who has had to take the morning after pill. And with that always comes some sort of shame or embarrassment, and it just absolutely should not. Well, Julie is aiming to be the emergency contraception company for the next generation, one of learning and acceptance, not stigma and shame. When it comes to complex and stressful choices around your health, Julie believes women deserve products that are easy in every way, easy to find easy to take, easy to relate to, and easy to understand. So basically what happens is Julie stops your body from releasing an egg using the same active ingredient as Plan B or other morning after pills. Essentially, Julie works by preventing or delaying your ovulation. With no egg, there's no fertilization and therefore no pregnancy. And also it is no risk to future fertility. Julie just launched at CVS, but you can also find Julie at Target and Walmart stores across the U.S., Or you can also order online just to have for the future in case it's legal in all 50 states and you do not need an ID, prescription or credit card to get it. And also, Julie is not just a morning after pill. It's a morning after pill brand that's working to increase access to emergency contraception for women across the country. How amazing is that? Seriously. Julie has a one for one donation program. And every time you purchase Julie at a store or online, 
The company donates one pill to someone who needs it. Julie partners with over 25 organizations across the country to provide donations to those disproportionately impacted by health inequities. It's just amazing. Right now, Julie is offering our listeners $10 off your online purchase. Go to juliecare.co slash circle time to get $10 off your online purchase for a limited time. That's juliecare.co slash circle time. Or if you need it right away, you can go find Julie at your nearest CVS, Target, or Walmart today. We all know that I am very much on my makeup journey lately, and I talk about it on Circle Time. If you watch my vlogs, you see on there, I'm always trying new makeup, and I have been so into looking for new products and trying new things and finding stuff that's cruelty-free and made with clean ingredients and all of that. And my friends have all been talking to me about Thrive Cosmetics, and I've tried their products and was obsessed. And most recently, I have tried the Brilliant Eye Brightener, and it really is just so good. So it's basically a highlighter stick made to brighten and open your eyes, giving you like an instant eye lift. So all you do is apply to like the inner corner of your eyes and you look like you've gotten plenty of restful sleep, even if you haven't, which I usually have not. But it makes me look like I have. And that is just wonderful. The foolproof formula makes it so easy to apply and blend any of the 13 shades. And Also, you can use these as like an eyeshadow for a daytime glow, or they have metallic shades, so you can do like an easy smoky eye. It's so versatile, and it's just the best. I am not a makeup pro by any means, but this makes it easy, and it makes me feel kind of like a pro. Like I said before, it's 100% vegan and cruelty-free and made with clean, skin-loving ingredients. There are no parabens, sulfates, or phthalates, but it still works better than anything else that I try. And one more thing that I love about Thrive Cosmetics is that the word cosmetics is spelt C-A-U-S-E for a reason. As part of their mission, every purchase supports organizations that help communities thrive, such as those battling education, domestic abuse, cancer, social justice, and more. It's just the best. You have to try Thrive Cosmetics. Right now, you can get an exclusive 20% off your first order when you visit thrivecosmetics.com slash circle time. That's Thrive Cosmetics. C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash circle time for 20% off your first order. It's tricky, but it's like it, we're lucky that we can experience it. But and I that's think a lot the other times, part of it, though, too. Yeah. It's like it makes me feel worse about myself because I'm like, this is the coolest thing in the world. Like, I don't have to totally open globes like and I was such a celebrity kid. Like I wanted to do so bad. And when I start to feel low about myself and like have these negative thoughts or like it kind of drains me, I'm like, but like, this is what you want it. Like, no, everybody else would kill to be in this position. Why aren't you like happy? It's a, it's a really big like mind game that I'm still trying to like master. It's I don't it's one of those things where it's like I feel like it just comes and goes in waves because I totally feel the same. I just I don't know that it gets easier. I think it just like it's kind of like an anxiety or an intrusive thought type of thing. You just like learn how to live with it and navigate it and like talk yourself off that ledge and like know that you're lucky, but it still is yeah. kind you, of crazy. If you think about it, like I always say, like that's why I started like the consulting side of my business and a lot a lot of what I do is on the back end because I want longevity in this industry and I love it so much. It's my passion. But I was like, I want that to be like part of my job because like I can't just have my job be based on other people's that like thoughts of me totally like yeah as an influencer your job is literally how other people feel about you and like them physically tapping their finger to show I like this like that is like that's the biggest head game because one day you can have everybody like love you like want to follow you so into it and then if you fall off, it's like, what could have, could I have been better with my job? And like, you're just basing your next moves on like how other people feel about you, which I think is like such a mind game. And like, it really so dangerous. is. It's great that you found a way to, to be in front and behind the camera, because I think that like, it's important to balance both of those things. And it just keeps things like interesting and mm-hmm. yeah, fun. definitely. It's such a great privilege too, because like I wanted to be on the creative side of things for so long. And I sent out like hundreds of my resumes 
to all the biggest like brands in Boston. And like, I couldn't even get an interview because like, I don't have a traditional background. So yeah. for me to be able to be touching these types of projects and having my voice be heard without a traditional resume is one, so special to me. And two, sh- shows that there's like shifts in the industry that are happening yeah, where like creatives can be hired to be creative, not just based on like a resume or like right, experience. Right. I mean, there are people on TikTok who make full fledged motion picture edits like yeah. four minutes after an episode drops. I'm like, they would like love to leave their typical nine to five to go work at a, a brand to do right. that for them, but they don't have the opportunity. You know what I mean? So totally. it's like tapping into that is something that I always encourage brands to do. That's the beauty of like TikTok, I feel like now, is especially because, and I feel like I mentioned this like every episode, it feels like almost, but like there are so many times in life where you think that you are going to major in something and that is going to be your job. And you think you have to have it all figured out by the time you, you know, whatever. And then you end up, you're you really into something creative, but since that wasn't what you majored in, then you don't want to do it. And so, and it's not on your resume and all of these things. But like TikTok, I feel like has opened the door to so many people who just like can show their worth and what they're good at and how creative they are and stuff. And just because they don't have the background, but they're still able to get those jobs and do those things because of like the doors that TikTok can open. Yeah, I think the most messages that I get like are, <laughs> it's never like, what's the link to your dress? Because like, <laughs> literally not they're gonna be they're always like I um like changed my major because of you like I'm going into college next year and like I major in PR now like oh I have this internship because you like it's things like that where I'm like whoa like okay I never think of what I'm doing or putting out there to be like life-changing you know like I'm literally sitting drinking Dunkin Donuts being like mm, Max and beer should do this like it's not yeah. like uh, yeah it's not peacemaker or anything. But when I hear that, I'm like, wow, that's like so incredible because that's the only thing that I want to come out of this. Essentially, I want to build out my consulting agency and expand and uh, like raise capital and really make it a like massive because I want to hire people like that who never had a traditional background or like started and became passionate about this just because they love social media. And right, like a right. lot of the times when I talk to my influencer friends, I'm like, you guys do know you could do consulting as well. They're like, no, like I could never do what you do. I'm like, do you understand that? Like you are a brand and like you're running a brand and like your social strategy and creative direction is like what you do every day. And like brands love to hear and tap into those types of things. So yeah, I think, I, I think it's so cool. I mean, TikTok, not in like a chewy TJ Maxx sign way, but like, it changed my life. Like, it, yeah, it, I no, would, for sure. Say, like, it's it's given me the financial stability that I never thought I would have in my life. It's given me the career opportunities I never thought I would have. And this is going to shift the direction of my life for yeah. the rest of my life. So for sure. it's it's great. It's It's been amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Do you ever find, because you're so good at like mm. working with, other brands or other influencers and stuff, do you struggle like making, like deciding what you want to do for yourself? Yeah, because I I think that's why I'm not like an influencer and people aren't asking me like what lip gloss I'm wearing because like yeah. I, I feel like I don't put the technique that I give brands and influencers like on myself. Mm-hmm maybe I should and like continue to like grow and get bigger and bigger. But I feel like what worked for me and what got me in these doors was were these kind of like very unscripted off the cuff. I never wearing makeup like that type of those types of videos that don't have a lot of thought in put into them or strategy right is what worked for me. And that's what my audience likes. But sometimes I take like the strategy or think about it in terms of like, my career, my business, but more so on like the branding side of like how I'm going to build my consulting business, like how I'm going to pitch this book that I want to do. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm in a creative rut right now. Like I haven't been making a lot of TikToks this week. I, I just, I get in creative ruts because like, I think that happens to everyone. Yeah. So much of my creativity 
everywhere. But yeah, I definitely struggle with that as well. Because people are like, what are PR moves for yourself? And I'm like, oh, fuck, maybe I should think of that. <laughs> well, it's hard. It's harder yeah. like when it's you. It does. I mean, that's like life, you know, yeah. like I feel like it's so much easier to be like, oh my God, she did this. And she yeah. like, it's so much easier to see the beauty in like other people. And yeah. then like you're harder on yourself for sure. A hundred percent. And it's like, I, it sucks too. And something that I've learned with working with brands like hand in hand is first and foremost, like you can have all these massive great ideas and give it to a brand or a person, but it's all about the execution of it. And I yeah. think like I used to focus so hard on like, these great big ideas and giving that to brands. But now I'm like, no, but like, how will this be executed? Who are we using? What is it going to look like? Right. And like, right. there's like so much more of a process to it than just ideas. And I'm like learning that side of things and being more hands-on with that side of things now as well. So uh, that really piques my interest. But like for me to do that, like just like by myself, like on my couch, it's like a lot. But yeah, I also feel like we've come so far and it's so cool, the career that I have, but I still get told no all of the time. When it comes to creativity, a lot of brands will tap me, utilize my creativity, and then I come and they're like, no, we can't do that because of this, this, and this. Like, there's still so much red tape, even in yes. just like brand deals and ads, which I'm like, that is the part of the industry I really want to shake up and change the most, but it's hard because it's like literal legal teams. But I feel like we need to come to a happy medium with like, shifting things a little bit if we want like brand deals or ads or just like content to continue to grow and be cool and, and innovative and things like that. It's yeah. A lot. Yeah. All right. You already know how much I love my perfect angel of a dog, my sweet boy, my chili. And this is not the first time that I have mentioned that I would do just about anything possible to make Chili the happiest dog in the world. And a big part of that, to be honest, is spoiling him and getting him as many fun things and as many delicious treats as I possibly can. And the easiest way to do that is with BarkBox. BarkBox is a monthly themed box of original toys, delicious treats, and unleashed joy. Every box is tailored to your dog's unique needs and personality designed to make them happy. BarkBox is made by Bark, the dog-obsessed company with one goal, make dogs as happy as they make us. And how perfect is that? I mean, they bring us so much joy and to give that joy back to them is just amazing. They deserve it. Plus, playtime isn't just for pups. It's for us pup parents also. Every bark box is designed to bring dogs and their humans together. Opening your monthly bark box becomes a special tradition for the whole family. Like truly, when I open up the bark box, seeing how excited Chili is just brings me so much joy. And I swear, I like opening the box as much as him. It's just so much fun. And it's also hard to beat the value and the convenience of BarkBox. Every month you get high quality dog goodies delivered right to your door. Plus it's just so much fun to see what we got. It's a fun little surprise. BarkBox makes dogs happy and there really is no better feeling as a dog mom than seeing Chili so happy. Every month he finds a new toy he's obsessed with And it's just the cutest thing in the world. It never fails to surprise me with how much joy Chili continually brings me. And with BarkBox, I feel like we can share in that joy together. And I just love it. It just makes me so happy. You have to try. Sign up now and BarkBox will double your first box for free. That's twice the toys, treats, and chews. So start spoiling your dog. To start, visit BarkBox.com slash circle time. I feel like a lot of times there's like a disconnect. Like even like if I'm doing like a brand deal and I want to make it my own or whatever, there's like a million legal things that I have to do. And I'm like, okay, like I can't, like I have to stick to this yeah. script kind of. And it's tough because it's like, it's a brand that I'm excited about and I like, but then there's like all of these things keeping me from making it my own in yeah. a way. So that's why like, I'll, that's what's so great about when I'm working with these brands or teams, because I'm like, you guys need to start hiring and tapping more like native creators who are on these apps every day to be a part of this conversation before this brand deal is even pitched to other creators. Because I can tell them like, this is not going to do well. Like, like this won't work. Like 
let's try to have a little bit of creativity here, but like stick to the script here. Like it's right, they need right. to have more people in these conversations who do these brand deals so it'll make sense. Because sometimes I'll, I'll sit in a room and I'll be like, okay, you guys are spending X amount of money on ads and brand deals. How many people in this room have TikTok on your phone right now? Right. <laughs> like how many people in this room who are yeah. writing these scripts and like spending hundreds of thousands of dollars who in this room right now making these decisions has TikTok on their phone? Right. It's, it's, it's like good question. there's like a mass. And I'll, I always use that example when I speak in, at conferences and panels. I'm like, I'm literally like the Alex Earl of conferences. Like I go to so many <laughs> conferences and panels. It's like my thing. That's awesome. And like, it's like the show, The Office. Like I love conferences. Like it's, <laughs> it's everything. But I always use that example. And everybody's like, yeah. You know what? You're right. I'm like, yeah. I mean, it's so true. And there's so many times where I'm like, I I know my audience. I know what they like and what mm-hmm. they're going to respond well to. And like, I can't do that because mm-hmm. of all of these legal things That's holding me tape. back from. Yeah. Yeah. So it can be frustrating for sure. Something else I wanted to ask you, and I've actually always been really curious about this, is do you, have you ever like said a PR idea for someone Mm -hmm. and, you know, made a video about them. If like an an influencer that didn't ask you to do it or, or one that did, and then they take your idea, but then they don't like, they make it seem like it was their own. No, but I've had brands. Okay. And is that, does that like really piss you off? (laughs) Like, yes. And no, like my team, okay. my team's going to be listening to this and be like, it does busy you off, Robin. Cause I'm like, <laughs> but at right. the end of the day, I'm like, it doesn't piss me off for what people would think. I'm not pissed off that they took the idea and like used it. Mm-hmm. It just frustrates me that like after the time that I've spent on these apps doing these ideas, that they wouldn't even tap me to try to be a part of the process. And like, I don't even need the credit. Like I could sign an NDA and literally just like be in the room and be a part of the process. Cause what I want out of this is experience. Cause I'm still coming to a place where like, I want to work and do certain things, but, and I have experience, but like they want more and they want more example. And it's like, it's like, all I want is experience. I want to be a sponge. I want to soak up as much as the back end of the industry as I like can to learn. So the fact that like, they're not even like tapping me to be a, part of it like that makes that's sense. what upsets me because I'm yeah. like you guys can spend x amount of money on brand deals with influencers and I'm not even asking for that much money I'm just asking to be a part of the process and you can't do that and you can't recognize that recently a brand and I'm not going to say who but like my team like might get upset with me for saying this but they even acknowledged that they were using my idea and like wanted to use like part of my video in the promo for it but like not pay me or like use me or like tap me to make it come to life like yeah it was after it was already created they're right. like hey. That's frustrating they're like hey I think you're right you got one of these PR moves right like and it might be dropping soon can we use your video uh to help promote it and I was like no um, this is so messed up. And like they use, they like to a T, like shot for shot what I said. And then they offered to give me oh, their God. product in return of like, as like a thank you. I was like, I don't need that. But that's the one that upset me the most because I'm not upset that like they stole my idea because a lot of the ideas I come up with, it's like people could come up with that. Like, you know what I mean? It's not rocket science, but like how I come up with it, my creative process, how I pitch it, like, is what's so special and so girl boss town and what people know me for. So if they wanted to tap me to help with that, like, that would be great. But right. No, that's, that's frustrating. Yeah. And it, and, sure. it, and it's even more frustrating because it's like brands, not influencers. Because I can see an influencer just being like, oh, this is cool advice. Like, I'm going to do it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, how am I going to work with Robin? Like, you know what I mean? But brands know like what I do and that I do consulting that aren't tapping me. It's kind of just like, yeah. And it's also just like brands have so much power and money and all of that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like, so, yeah. they, it's just frustrating mm-hmm. for sure. But now I'm like, I always take it though as like, okay, so clearly my worth, my voice, my ideas are what the industry wants and are happening. Yeah. So that's just 
showing me that the doors are open and it's my turn to get in there and do it myself. It's true. You're obviously like oh. obviously very good at what you're doing. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, of course. Um, is there anything in pop culture right now that's exciting you that you want to, that you would like to like get involved in PR wise? I'm trying to think. I Marshall, my producer, sorry, I interrupted you. He he was mentioning Olivia Rodrigo's album. And if you had any ideas about her new music and why she's using purple yeah. on this album as well as the last one. And it like might switch to red when the album, I've seen the theories. So here's the thing. I love Petra Collins. I love when she did uh, her music videos with Petra Collins. Last, mm-hmm. uh, when she originally dropped music, I was like, this is genius. Her styling was like insane with Chloe and Chanel, I believe. Everything about like that first album, like obviously was massive. And I thought was so well executed. And I was like, damn, like this is really great. Like, and her manager, Aline Kashian, who is Selena's manager, like she has the best team in the world. I was like, this is great. Good job. When the vampire first pictures dropped, I was like, what? Like I... This like underwhelmed, would you say? I was um, underwhelmed, but okay. I still think she is genius and so talented. And they're, yes. I'm hoping that like once everything rolls out, it kind of unfolds and does all right, 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 more creative right. things. Yeah. But I wasn't super, oh yeah, I was, I was underwhelmed. And I think that like she did it so well the first time that expectations are high, which means must be so incredibly hard for her. But I just want to see her touch on it a little bit more instead of it being looking like this is what like a teen music pop star should be. You know what I mean? OK. Mm-hmm. And like mm-hmm. she has the I, I know her team is brilliant and she they have the resources. So I'm sure something will come out that's great. But I was a little un- underwhelmed with the first snippet of it for sure. OK, I understand that. I'm also really into UK pop culture. I, okay. like, oh, I've seen your posts. Yeah. About Central C. Well, that like that. Yeah. Like he followed me. Oh, I saw. I'm excited for yes. you. Yes. I love him. I love Chicken Chop Date. I love Same. Love Island UK. Same. I love like I'm just so deep in like UK pop culture. And there's this like girl group called Flow. I feel like we should integrate more UK pop culture with US pop culture because it worked with One Direction, obviously. But then they tried to do it with a little mix and like it just didn't work as well. So like I feel like there's a really big opportunity with UK pop culture kind of getting bigger and bigger, especially because of like TikTok that we can enter a little bit more with US pop culture. I also love Bobby Alltalk. Is that how you say her last name? Yes, I I think that's how you say her last name. I don't know for sure. So that's what really excites me about pop culture currently is like the chicken shop date, the bot, like Mm -hmm. the really good podcast Mm -hmm. type interviews. I love when collabs happen or things happen in pop culture that like so don't make sense at all. Yeah. But then it does. Like yeah. that is what excites me and that I love like the most. And I think I love that the mystery behind it. Like, how did she get Drake on her fourth podcast episode? How did she slither her way into that bed? You I, know, I don't know. And I'm, but I'm glad so it curious. happened. Me too. It's amazing. I love Drake so much and I've never met me him. Me too. Like never Neither. even seen him or like <laughs> whatever. It's just he's one of those people that I'm like, what, what? like untouchable like him oh, taylor like, swift rihanna like to me like i will never cross paths with them and they are untouchable i cross paths with rihanna at can oh i heard about that mm-hmm. i'm sure you heard about like that can trip there was a lots of um it was like the craziest experience of my life and when you go through those types of trips and the people you experience it with like you just become like so close so fast it's it's bonding yeah so like me and yeah. jake are like awkward like octopus lover, like we just became so close and our team became yeah. so close. And yeah, we were like with Rihanna. It was just crazy, craziness. Yeah, see, that's really cool. Like, yeah. I can't even imagine. Like, she's just that she's one of those celebrities that I can't. And her name imagine. is Robin, spelled the right. same as mine. So I always, yes. I'm so delusional, the Lulu in my head that I'm like, <laughs> if I met Drake, like, would I say my name is Robin? Like, would that, like, put a bad taste in his mouth? Like, would that be Oh, my awful? God, wait, that's a really good question. What I've, are you going to say, Girl Boss Town? I've thought, I can't. Say GBT? Yeah. Say Rob, Rob's? Rob. 
I don't know, but I'm nervous because like, I just- Oh my God, now I'm nervous. Yeah, I've and I've thought about this for a while. And like, I'm in my head too. I'm like, he's like <laughs> texted like long text saying sorry to Robin. And like, that makes me happy, which is like why I'm so sick and disgusted. You know what? I, I actually think he would be like, you would say your name's Robin and he'd kind of like look look back again and be yeah. like, hey, I love that name. Yeah, and because I, I feel like he'll always love Rihanna, so like oh, I feel like actually I know. Yeah, I want to so be feel like you're probably good. Second time's a charm, <laughs> you know. Like uh, <laughs> round two, what? No, right, exactly. Um, <laughs> but it's Robin, bring it back for one more time for the Robins. Yeah, Drake. Robin, I, and he's never like fully <laughs> name dropped Robin in a song. He's only said Rob, and like in my sick brain too. I'm like praying that he puts my name in a song so like my ex is here and think about me like that is like <laughs> where like that is the things I think about on a daily basis like I'm thinking about that I'm thinking about like the John and K plus eight drama and I'm thinking about my dog like that oh my god I can't get into the John and K plus eight drama because I never watched it so do you want to know something and it also sad? just like really stresses me out oh it's and I'm not saying this so like this is not funny at all I actually think it's like so incredibly sad and like heartbreaking it is. but I had a little bit like a for rough. I'm laughing because I'm nervous. I had a little bit of a rough childhood. Um, and my escape through that was going in my room and on my portable DVD player watching DVDs of Johnny Capel's eight. And okay. I just became wow, DVDs. Yeah, I just became like addicted to it. And like it was like my safe space, whatever, which is weird. Wow. I love TLC, you know, like the, I just like yeah. watching those TLC shows, like Toddlers and Chihuahuas, yeah. Johnny Capel's eight. And when they got to like when they got divorced, I sent them an email like because I was so heartbroken and Aww. I no, that's weird. And I, <laughs> and I found it. I the think other, it's sweet. I found it the other day and like, Oh, by the way, I was old. I was in like eighth grade. Yeah. This is not like, this is not little kid. The but, shit I was doing in eighth grade. Yeah. I should, I know was not acceptable um, for like a 13 year old to be doing. So I, and I understand found it that. and I read it and I was like, Holy shit. This is the reason why I'm in therapy. Like this <laughs> email <laughs> just shows that like I am so bad like everything that runs through my head is just like not normal at all like at all you know all. delusions are good though a lot of the time well they, I feel 100%. like it, it turns into like manifesting and then it becomes a reality if, yeah. if, if it's a good delusion hopefully. yeah and I I legitimately I manifested everything in my life like to us like a, especially my career with this to like a scary Point where like I freak myself out and when I do my PR predictions and they're like spot like spot 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 on I like freak myself out and I feel like since I was young I'm not like clairvoyant or that's raven but I feel like I have like such a strong intuition and like get visions. I get visions I, I get visions I really that's, do that's wonderful yeah and I and now you're using them to your benefit mm -hmm. raven like, couldn't <laughs> yeah i mean raven but like wait did you actually see that she he said she I did the same thing she said that she she, she has, has visions me and raven yeah. out here like <laughs> but now i'm gonna like meet drake tomorrow i'll watch oh my god i would but, die yeah I, I think it's like intuition like it's like it's weird and like when i was in elementary school you know when your teacher's picking partners and they're like okay robin you're gonna be with kelsey like they would do that yeah. I would always know the name they were going to say next. Really? And I would write it down to like impress my friends. And they'd be like, whoa. Well, it was like a magic trick. Oh my trick. God, that's cool. But I think I'm just pulling it out of my ass. But like maybe it is real because like. It's but it's working either through. way. Like, yeah. E e even if you're not, they're not actually like psychic visions, mm -hmm. like you're doing it yeah. either way. It's so So crazy. it's like, it is. Yeah. It's benefiting. Yeah, for sure. The world so. is benefiting from your your visions. I know. I whether like, or not they're real visions. I want to have like, you remember like with those psychics who would come on TV at like three in the morning and you would like have to like call the number and like ask a question. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, I should do that. Like this peacock. You should. One, like, does any network want to pick that up? I mean, obviously we after the strike and everything settled, but it's more of a reality thing. Right, right, right. Or you could just do it on TikTok live. That could be your life. That is it. That is it. There it is. Yep. There it is. I should I do can't that. Wait. Yeah. You should. I'll send little things. Like, Am I pretty? I'm like, mm, I can't. That's not a future question. <laughs> yeah. But um, still. Yeah. No, I'm going to do that. That's smart. You should. I PR think that's move. a good plan. Yeah. 
Okay. Oh my gosh. Well, we're almost done here. I have one more question for you. Okay. It's a quick question. We do a little like journal time at the end of every circle time. And I, you would get to pick at random if you were here, but since you're not, I just have one for you. Thank you for giving me the option. (laughs) I'm sorry. I did. I also forgot them. So I'm just picking one out of the only one I remember. If you had to wear one outfit every day for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, wow. This is a good question. I feel like, what if I was like naked? No. You could say your birthday suit. No, that actually would be the worst, the opposite of what I would pick. I'd rather walk around in like a parka every day. Like an oversized worn shirt from like a cheerleading competition in eighth grade. Okay. An XL that's now like a little tight on me. And uh, like Sophie, like soft athletic shorts and then like a really good pair of like sneakers and socks. That's perfect. Like a little bit of high sock that you scrunch down. Because I'd yeah. be comfy, but I really like like shoes. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I respect that answer. It's kind of like cheer camp vibes. Cheer, I'm still, I'm like literally still going to cheer camp every day. And I like, wish I was still going to cheer camp. Like, I loved you're every 29. second of cheer camp. Yeah. Like cheer I, camp was the highlight of every summer. Oh, well, 100%. I cheered through college too. And like I did all-star cheerleading. And I actually, get it. I lo- I'm such a camp girl too. I'm leaving on Friday to go volunteer at the grief camp I volunteer at but it's just like normal camp as well. So I have my cheer camp vibes always. That's amazing. And my brain be going to cheer camp. Wow. Well, I love it. That's a perfect answer. Yes. Thank you. And thank you. And thank you for joining us today. It was so fun getting to talk to you. It was so nice. I I love the circlers. Do you guys have like a symbol? The circlers? No, I just made that up. I have no idea. We we don't. We don't, but I'll work on one. Um, yeah. but they, I, the circlers love you and I love you. So thank you for joining. Do you want to tell them where they can find you? Yeah. So my address, no I'm kidding. It's like whenever anybody asks that question, I'm like, isn't that like a safety concern? Like, yeah, you want to no, tell the entire internet, like where they can find you <laughs> and like what you're doing? <laughs> You, I'm um, gonna reframe, rephrase no, that from now on. No, it's not you. It's literally <laughs> no. It's true. I know, but I kind of hate it now that I'm thinking about it like that. So <laughs> that's the intrusive thoughts in my head. Okay, <laughs> it, it's at Girl Boss Town, G I R L B O S S T O W N on Instagram and TikTok. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Robin. We loved having you on. This is amazing. Bye. Bye. See you next time. Please note that this episode may contain paid endorsements and advertisements for products and services. Individuals on the show may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to in this episode.